we had an eclipse yesterday, and there were a lot of people looking up at the eclipse, and not everybody was wearing the proper eyewear. And you can really do damage to your eyes that way. You could lose your eyesight. I mean, what do you think happened to Angel Hernandez? Hey, Derek, this is Chase Zorowski from Charlotte, North Carolina. I discovered your channel back in 2022. I just want to say you're doing an awesome job and you make the Yankee season super enjoyable. Uh, I just wanted to touch on Anthony Volpe and get your thoughts. Um, you know, the kid's a stud, obviously. He's made a lot of changes, and his approach this year looks completely different, um, both at the plate and in the infield. He looks solid. Um, I just wanted to get your thoughts on extending him long-term if he keeps up with this with this pace through uh, throughout the year here, maybe similar to the way the Braves re-sign their younger players. I think you could help out in the long term uh, with, you know, the, the amount of money he'll, he'll end up getting in the long term. Let me know your thoughts. Yeah, I appreciate the call and the kind words. I said about two or three games into the season, actually, that I had seen enough and the Yankees should extend him. Not only will you save money in the long term by extending him, but he's become kind of a can't miss. I mean, last year was rough for him. He still won a gold glove. He still hit 20 home runs. He still stole 20 bases. But this year he has completely transformed himself as a player. He is just playing with way more confidence out there, not only on offense but on defense too. I, I just see him taking more chances on defense, You know, sliding for balls, diving for balls in the hole, and making great throws. His arm looks stronger this year. He's a little spark plug. And not only should the Yankees extend him, but they should extend Juan Soto, who had a great game last night, but he might be slightly more expensive, just slightly. Hey, Derek, it's a save situation. I just wanted to call and say, wow, everything is just going according to plan. Win, win, win. Awesome. You know, I just have a quick observation to make. Um, I just love these scrap heap picks up pickups. They just took a picture, picture off the street, throw them on the mound, and they like pick the shutout. So I just love the uh, underdogs. Yeah, we tend to find guys that other teams have cast off, and there's something in the metrics that the Yankees like, whether it's their you know sinker or their changeup or the spin rate on their fastball or whatever it is. And it seems to work out. Now, it doesn't always work out. We've had a number of guys that have been picked up off the scrap heap that have not done well. We've also picked up what we would call some sure things that have completely failed over the years. So, you know, you hit some, you miss some, some strikes, some gutters in the words of the big Lebowski. But uh, thanks for the call. Things are going great. There's not a lot to complain about right now if you're a Yankees fan, which would explain why most of the voicemails today are positive, which is rare, but I'm loving it. I was just wondering... If Anthony Volpe has a great season, say that, like, in the mid-70s, 250s, is there any chance the Yankees extend him after the end of the year? And uh, what were you thinking about the extension? It would be like a five-year, six-year, or maybe more like 10 or 12. It's funny. We weren't getting that many calls about extending Anthony Volpe just a couple of weeks ago, but after his hot start, they're flooding in. I think everybody can see what I can see, what the viewers on this channel can see, is that he's completely transformed. In terms of the years, I would say it would probably be 8 to 10 years, I would think. You would sign him up through his early 30s. You might even give him a few more years. And then, uh, in terms of money, you know, I would say probably 15 to $18 million per year or, or some kind of an escalating deal. And that'll save you from having to pay $27, $30 million, you know, when he becomes a free agent. Because he's going to hit the free agent market in his late 20s and command a big deal. I think you can lock him up through his early 30s now. And just judging by what we've seen this season, you'll get 10 years of great defense. You'll probably get a few all-star appearances. And he's really becoming a guy who I think is going to hit around 300 now. I mean, he is the guy that we were looking at last year in spring training. He's not the guy who was trying to launch home runs. I know he hit one last night. It was a hanging breaking ball. That's what you do with hanging breaking balls. But most of the time now, his approach is to hit a line drive somewhere, which is exactly what you want from that type of player. And he's using his speed. He's got wheels. And those are not going to go away anytime soon because he's still a kid. The young man looks special. He looks like he's, he's tuned up this year, ready to have a big season. Going to be big for the brand in the long run. He. he if he just keeps progressing like this, too, it's uh, 
he, he has a real opportunity to take New York by storm and just be a legend. Might be a little bit early for the legend talk, but I'll take multi-time all-star. How about that? How about multi-time gold glove winner? How about multi-time world champion? You know what? That does sound like a legend to me. Hey, Derek. This is uh, Ethan from Charlotte here. And I just want to take time to talk about how great the offense is doing and the fact that we have some players coming back. I mean, you've already got Volpe and Soto carrying this offense. Just think about what it's going to be like when uh, Garrett Cole comes back, Judge gets hot, Glaber gets hot. I mean, this is going to be dangerous. But uh, also LeMahieu returning, I don't know if I want him back. I think that's something the Yankees should uh, consider. They should give more playing time to Cabrera, even when LeMahieu returns. The Cabrera thing is a sentiment that I think a lot of Yankees fans share. He should be the third baseman until he cools off, at least. He has looked great. He is basically shadowing Juan Soto as a player and trying to model his game and his approach at the plate after Juan Soto. And, hey, it's working so far. He has looked fantastic. In terms of DJ LeMahieu, I think he can still be useful to the Yankees as a utility guy. But I've been saying this for years. His body is breaking down. His days of being an everyday player are probably over, or they should be. But I have no problem running him out there a couple of times a week to fill in at third base or second base or first base to give guys a day off because he is a contact hitter. Most of the time his strikeouts were up last year, but... I, you know, he's still a solid defense. He's a good clubhouse guy. Let him play out his contract. But I think you're right. His days as a starting player are probably coming to an end. And it's through no fault of his own. His body is just giving out. And that happens to the best of us. Hey, Derek. It's Spike Farley here. Nestor was awesome tonight. Eight innings, shut out. It was just great to see him with some confidence on the mound again. Even though it's the Marlins, I know it's nothing really to write home about. But a lot of people recently have been saying 2022 was kind of a fluke year, and he's not a good starter. He's not meant to be a starter. So it was just nice to see him do a good job in that role again. Yeah, even perhaps more important is that he gave the bullpen a little bit of a rest. We need Carlos Rodon to do the same thing tonight because the bullpen has been getting a little bit worn out. And we've seen this from the Yankees in recent years where the starting pitching doesn't give you enough depth early in the season. And then by June or July, the bullpen is running on fumes, and we don't want that to happen. We do have some guys coming back. we got Efros coming back later this year and things like that. But it's important that these starters give us some length, and we're paying Rodone a lot of money. He should be able to give us seven innings against the Marlins, and that's kind of what I expect tonight. Now, eight innings from Nestor last night. He was totally in control that's going to do wonders for his confidence. But again, it is the Marlins. Let's not give him the Cy Young Award yet, but that's what good pitchers should do against teams like the Marlins. So nice job from Nasty Nestor. Hey, this is uh, John from Connecticut uh, calling. Big fan of the show. Um, I love tuning in after after the games. It's just really, really, really refreshing and exciting to see the Yankees getting off to – this kind of start to the season, um, like, I, I, I can't even recall them winning, like, more than, like, three or four games in a row last year, let alone, you know, starting the season out like this. I just want to get your thoughts and opinion on, um, like, a Juan Soto extension. Like, do you think it's going to go to the point where he walks and it's, free agency and the Yankees are fighting with the other teams to sign him or do you think like Soto's happy in New York and he seems happy in New York but um, you know I know his agent is a, a tough agent to deal with and stuff but I'm just curious on on your opinion my opinion is that he will at least test free agency you don't turn down 440 million not to hit free agency that's what Scott Boris clients do And Scott Boris had a rough winter, but he's got some big clients next year, Juan Soto, Corbin Burns, among others. But I do think the Yankees have a good chance to re-sign him if they have a good year because the Mets are in the toilet, and the Mets are going to be the primary team that's trying to sign him. He's not going to want to go from a team that's really good to a team that's rebuilding. And uh, I just don't think that the Yankees are going to let this guy walk. 
seeing what he does over the course of a full season. I mean, we see he he hits tough pitching. He gets on base in front of Judge. He hits big home runs. The guy's a Hall of Famer, and he's in the prime of his career. So it would be stupid for the Yankees to let him walk over money. All right, so call in after each game. We're taking these voicemails each morning. Yankees play the Marlins again tonight at 7 p.m., and then they play them again tomorrow night to finish out the series. They got Thursday off, as they have Thursdays off a lot early in this season. So uh, tune in to the game, the recap tonight, and I will see you next time. Oh!